I want to talk about one more form of a quadratic function, and that is the vertex form of a quadratic function. We now have three ways to write the quadratic function. The standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The factored form, which is y equals a times in parentheses x minus s times in parentheses x minus r. In that one, s and r are the zeros. And then finally the vertex form, which is y equals a times in parentheses x minus h. And then that part in parentheses is squared. Outside of the parentheses in the square we have plus k. And in this case, h comma k is the vertex. Now you'll hear me just say that as y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. I'm going to leave out the parentheses sometimes, but that's what I mean when I say that. It's, it's the vertex form of the quadratic function. Let's just make sure you understand how that vertex form works with the h comma k as the vertex. So we have four quadratic functions below, and we're going to find the vertex and axis of symmetry for each one and then check our answer with Desmos. The first one is f of x equals negative 2 times parentheses x plus 3, close the parentheses and square it, and then minus 4 after the square. It might help you to write the vertex form above this, which is f of x equals a times parentheses x minus h squared plus k, so that we can see the different parts of this. The h comes after the x minus, and so in this case we have x plus 3, that's actually x minus negative 3, so the minus 3 is the h value, and then the plus k value is this minus 4 off to the end of this, so this gives us a vertex of negative 3 comma negative 4. And then the axis of symmetry would be the vertical line going through the x value, so the axis of symmetry. I'm just going to write axis of s here. It's going to be x equals negative 3. Let's double check that. So we've graphed f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 4, and it's a parabola that opens down. If I touch the vertex here, it's at negative 3 comma negative 4. So we've got the vertex, and then the axis of symmetry we said should be x equals negative 3, and when we graph that with a dashed line, we can see that the parabola reflects perfectly over that. So we've got that. This next one, we have g of x equals 0.5 x squared plus 6. Again, let's write the vertex form above it. That's a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. Now in this case, we don't really have the x minus h part, but it looks like we have a part that's 0.5 that's in front of the x squared. We have a k term off to the side, that's the plus 6, and we just need to rethink that x squared term. It's really like an x minus 0 term. So if I just rewrite this as g of x equals 0 0.5 times x minus 0 squared plus 6, then I can read off the h value, which is 0, and the k value, which is that plus 6. So the vertex is going to be 0 comma 6 and the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 0. That's the, that's the vertical line that goes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. We can double check it with Desmos. When we graph f of x equals 0.5x squared plus 6, the parabola that opens up, and the vertex is at 0, 6. So that looks great. The next one is h of x equals 0.25 times x minus 5 squared plus 3. This is actually in the perfect form for us. Just going to rewrite that vertex form right above a times x minus h squared plus k. And the h part is going to be the 5, and the plus k part is going to be the plus 3. So the vertex, no need to even rewrite anything here, is going to be 5 comma 3, which means our axis of symmetry is going to be through that x coordinate x equals 5. One more, c of t equals 100 t squared. In this case, we'll look at a times, we'll write it as t minus h squared plus k instead of x minus h squared. And it looks like we've got the a value, that's the 100, it's the number in front of the t squared. We're missing the plus k, there's nothing here, 
And we're also missing the H and the T minus H. There's nothing there either. And in this case, if we rewrote it, we just have two zeros in here. We have C of T equals 100 times parentheses T minus zero, close the parentheses squared, plus zero. In other words, the vertex is zero, zero. And the axis of symmetry is X equals zero. Let's double check that one. C of T equals 100 T squared. And we, we can tap the vertex of that parabola and see see that it is in fact zero, zero. So those all look good. All right, now we're gonna to try to take a quadratic function written in standard form and write it in both factored form and vertex form. They should all give us the same graph and we should be able to do this by looking at the graph in the standard form. Now, one thing to be aware of is that the A value in all three forms of a quadratic function are actually the same value. So whether you're looking at the standard form or the factored form or the vertex form, that A in all of them is exactly the same, which means that in this quadratic function that we have, f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 9, the a value in all three forms is going to be the number in front of x squared, which is 2. Let's start by just graphing this function and getting all the important points off of it, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the vertex, and sketching a graph of it for ourselves. Here we've got f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 9. Let's go ahead and grab the x-intercepts first. I have negative 1.345. That's a zero of the graph. I have positive 3.345. So that's also a zero of the graph. I have a y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 9. I have a vertex of 1, comma, negative 11. Now the vertex is where that axis of symmetry must be, so I'm going to add that. And you might have wondered why we use this axis of symmetry. Well, it turns out to be really handy when you're graphing parabolas because we know that the function is perfectly symmetric over it. So I can draw in that dashed line that goes through the vertex and then try to make sure that my parabola is a mirror image on both sides. Now what that's going to mean is that if we have a point at 0, comma, negative 9, which is 1 away from the axis of symmetry, then we should also have a point at 1, comma, negative 9, because 1, comma, negative 9 is 1 away on the other side of the axis of symmetry. See how that works? So let me go ahead and sketch this function. So we have a parabola that opens up vertex at 1, comma, negative 11. All right, now let's go back to that factored form. First one we want to write, that's f of x equals a times x minus r in parentheses times x minus s in parentheses. Now I know the zeros and I know the a value, so I should be able to rewrite this pretty easily. f of x equals 2, which is the a value, times x minus negative 1.345, which is going to be x plus 1.345, and then x minus 3.345. And this equation here should be exactly the same as the equation in standard form. Let's give it a try. I'm just going to write this one with a y equals, to make it a little faster y equals 2 times parentheses x plus 1.345 times parentheses x minus 3.345 and bam it's exactly the same as our function in standard form. Woohoo we got the first one. All right so let's do the second one. Now we need it in vertex form. Vertex form is f of x equals a times x minus h in parentheses squared plus k outside the parentheses. I know what h and k are. h is 1 and k is negative 11. That's the vertex, h and k. And I know what the value of a is. a is 2. That came from the standard form, so let's rewrite it. f of x equals 2 times x minus h is 1, so that's going to be x minus 1 squared, plus k, and it's going to be minus 11, because it's plus negative 11. And so that should be the vertex form. Let's try it out and see how it works y equals 2 times parentheses x minus 2 squared minus 11. Oh, I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? x minus 1 squared. There we go. Let's fix that. x minus, and this is how you check if your answers are correct, right? We change it. There we go. We've got it exactly. x minus 1, so y equals 2 times the parentheses x minus 1 squared minus 11. It looks great. All right, last problem, and this one's for you. I want you to rewrite f of x equals 2.6 times, in parentheses, x minus 4 times, in parentheses, x plus 1.2. I want you to rewrite this factored form into vertex form by examining the graph and then just prove that the two equations are equivalent. Give it a try. Come back when you're finished. Okay, we're back. 
I have gone ahead and graphed f of x equals 2.6 and then in parentheses x minus 4 times in parentheses x plus 1.2. This is a parabola that opens up and it has a vertex at 1.4 comma negative 17.576. All we need to write the vertex form is the vertex and the a value, which we already have from the factored form. So let's just go ahead and try to write it. Let's do y equals the a value is 2.6 times parentheses. Now we need x minus h, and the h value, remember that comes from the vertex, that's 1.4, so that's x minus 1.4. We're going to square that whole thing. And then we're going to add the k value. Well, the k value is negative 17.576. So let's actually subtract instead of adding minus 17.576. And it looks perfect. And now we just need to prove that these two equations are equivalent. Well, the only way we're going to prove they're equivalent is by working them both out to be the standard form. So I'm just going to put them side by side. We first need to do the square, and we need to remember that when we square a binomial, it's not just squaring each term, right? So we have f of x equals 2.6, and then really what we have here is x minus 1.4 times x minus 1.4 minus 17.576. So we've got to do distribution to multiply that binomial. So let's do that, f of x equals 2.6 times x times x is x squared, x times negative 1.4 is negative 1.4x. We got another one from the inside, negative 1.4 times x is one negative 1.4x. And then negative 1.4 times negative 1.4 is positive 1.96. That's all inside the parentheses multiplied by 2.6. And then off to the side, minus 17.576. Let's do the simplification step. So inside the parentheses, we can add the negative 1.4x's. So we'll have 2.6 times parentheses x squared minus 2.8x plus 1.96. Close the parentheses, minus 17.576. Now we'll do the distribution of the 2.6. That's f of x equals 2.6x squared. That comes from 2.6 times x squared. Then we need to do 2.6 times negative 2.8, which gives us negative 7.28x. And then 2.6 times 1.96, which gives us plus 5.06. 9, 6, and then finally minus the 17.576. We are almost there, folks. f of x equals 2.6x squared minus 7.28x, and then we need to take 5.096 and subtract 17.576, which gives us negative 12.48. So that's what the standard form is according to the vertex form. Now we just need to do it one more time coming out of that factored form. Let's start by multiplying out the two binomials. f of x equals, leave the 2.6 in front, and then multiplying x times x is x squared. x times 1.2 is 1.2x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times 1.2 would be negative 4.8. Now let's combine our like terms in the middle of the parentheses there. So f of x equals 2.6 times parentheses x squared. 1.2x minus 4x would be minus 2.8x minus 4.8. Close the parentheses. Now let's multiply everything by 2.6. Let's do that distribution. So f of x equals 2.6 times x squared is 2.6x squared. 2.6 times minus 2.8x gives us negative 7.28x. And finally, 2.6 times negative 4.8 gives us negative 12.48. And you might not have believed that this was all going to turn out okay, but look at that. The vertex form works out to be the exact same thing that the factored form works out to be. So we've got it, they are exactly the same. To recap, 
In this video, we learned about the vertex form. We also worked with changing from one form of a quadratic function to another form. In all three forms, remember that the a value is exactly the same. And you can find things like zeros and vertexes from the graph. Finally, if you need to check that your forms are the same, you've got two options. You can work out the algebra like we did at the bottom of the page, or you can go over to Desmos and graph them and make sure they are the same.